Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah. Hi, and welcome to episode one of Super Agents Live. In this quick episode, episode one, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the show, a little bit about what we want to accomplish, and then if you're interested and you want to keep on listening, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, who is behind the mic. For the show, <clears throat> Super Agents Live was conceived on a talk show. I was invited to come on a show and tell my story, and the, the show is called The Eventual Millionaire. This show interviews millionaires and asks them how they did it, as well as give advice to aspiring millionaires. One thing that I was asked on the show, she said, uh, it was Jamie Tardy's, the, the host, she said, Toby, how do people, what would you tell people who wanted to make a million? And my answer was, pick the right vehicle. If you wanted to travel across the Gobi Desert, you wouldn't try it in a Ferrari. <clears throat> You'd need to have a four-wheel drive with a bunch of extra gas tanks and stuff strapped on. That's the right vehicle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Too many people hear stories about the next new app that made the founder a multimillionaire in just a few years. Consequently, what people do is they go out and they try to build a tech company or a web app only to fail. In fact, the vast majority of these ventures never earn the founder even a modest salary, much less millions. These moonshots, tech companies, web apps, are simply not the right vehicle for creating wealth, for becoming a millionaire. And on the show, that show, I explained that if you want to become a millionaire, find the right vehicle or industry where lots of people have done it before you. And there is no better industry than real estate. In real estate, you don't have to have a fancy education, MBA, or even lots of connections. You don't need to have a lot of money or specialized knowledge to begin with. All you need is drive, desire. That revelation was the beginning of Super Agents Live. I started looking around for resources that agents had available so they could be successful. And I quickly realized, for the most part, Real estate is broken, it's old, it's fragmented, and it's essentially stuck in the 70s. For the most part, all aspiring agents have available is to go buy a book, most are not that great, attend a seminar, or hire a coach. I wanted to change that landscape. For me, my career early on, I was deeply affected by Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And I thought if I followed his footsteps by talking with the most successful people in real estate, I can make a difference in people's lives. I went out, I started interviewing the most successful people out there. And so far it's been inspirational and motivational for me personally. These super agents spill their guts on my show and they give actual advice for the aspiring agent. Luckily, I have a deep background in real estate and as a sales guy and, and as an entrepreneur, that background has allowed me to dig out the nuggets of gold that these people deliver. If you're interested in my story, go to superagentslive.com slash Toby Salgado in episode one. That's this show. I'm actually reading from, from what is... <laughs> Anyhow, let me, let me share what I want to accomplish with this project. Um, as you know, there are lots of coaches out there that will tell you if you buy their products or go to their seminar or, or your business will increase by 42.5% or something like that. The problem is that these elusive tips and tricks are behind a paywall. You have to pay to get the information that's going to help you. Uh, look, I'm sure their products and seminars work to a degree, and I'm not telling you to not to go out and buy their stuff, and I'm not saying that they're full of crap. In fact, I've had a lot of these people on my show, and they've been, they've been great episodes by and large. I'm just saying I feel there's a better way to help people grow their businesses and improve their lives, and it starts with a four-letter word, which is free. The internet has paved a path of providing value through free content. People can get valuable information before spending their hard-earned dollars. That's why our interviews are free and will always be free. We do have costs for our studio and marketing and bandwidth and, and everything else, but we feel that by selling sponsorship and creating other products like our mastermind groups, Super Agent Nation Forum, and webinars, you know, we can cover our cat costs and pay our staff. The other thing, well, I'm sorry. 
here's what we want to accomplish. So that's about the show. This is what we want to accomplish. Here's our goals. Number one, we want to build the premier brand for real estate agents to gain information. We would love to be the Wikipedia of real estate, having all the documented catalog knowledge of, of successful people out there. We also want to catalog a list of marketing strategies, business plans, scripts, dialogues. We want to be the go-to portal for real estate agents. We want to create the largest community in the world for aspiring and veteran real estate agents. We would love to be the first thing you, you look for in the morning and the last thing at night. You know, really, we want to reduce and flattening that learning curve that we all have. So, guys, that is about the show, and that is what we would love to accomplish. We want you to be a part of that, but, but just, but maybe, just maybe. If do you want to know who's behind the mic? Who is this Toby fella? Anyway, well, my name's Toby Salgado. I'm, I'm 43 years old. I'm turning 44 next month, January 2013, and I am a serial entrepreneur. In my career, I've built six different companies. In fact, I've been a, an entrepreneur my whole life. You know, my first business, and some of this is going to be boring for a little bit, so you can tune out in, you know, uh, for a few minutes, but uh, I'm, I'm going to walk you through my resume. My first business was actually a painting business I did in college. You know, I had to figure out, like most people, I had to figure out how to wait to how I could pay my tuition without getting into debt. I saw all these people in debt. I didn't want to be that. Uh, my dad was a contractor growing up and, and I went to work with him and I knew how to paint a house. So I got my first loan at school, tuition money, and I took some of that money and uh, I went out and bought some uh, painting equipment, some ladders and drop claws and a, and a use sprayer. And then I, so now I had the stuff and then I went out and I was creating a farm without really knowing what I was doing, but I, I picked a neighborhood. I enlisted the help of my little sister and just started going door to door, knocking on doors and offering free estimates. And it's funny, my little sister got more estimates than I did, but I wouldn't go into the details of that business. But I ended that summer making on average about 10 grand a month. I didn't have to work in the winters. And in my later years, I had crews working for me while I was in class. It was fantastic. After a while, I hated it, like, like most things that you do. And I was anxious to get into a corporate job. I thought that's what I needed to do. And I thought that was the best thing for me. My first corporate job, uh, I went from making about 50 grand a year to 28 grand with commissions. I took a step down. The company was Balboa Capital, and I was doing equipment leases. I ended up my first year being not only the rookie of the year, but having the strongest first year ever in the history of the company. I thought that I, I thought I could do no wrong. You know, but when I looked at it, I, I was doing about $150,000 a month in transactions. And I was earning Balboa, the company. They were earning about 30 to 45 grand a month off of my work. And you know how much I was getting? I was making about 3,500 bucks a month in commissions. I, and I just I, like after a while, I was just like, I'm leaving way too much money on the table. I left and I started a company called Allied Funding Group. There was lots of stuff I didn't know about starting a finance company. And I, I did it for about a year before I quit. I looked at it and I said, man, I just can't see myself working in my dark, dingy executive office when I'm 55. So I went back to corporate and I did some interesting things in finance before I started my next company. Uh, and and that, was, uh, that was back in 1999. And, and in 99, uh, the internet was going crazy. So me and three other Stanford MBA guys wrote up a plan, hit Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley. That's where you raise money in the valley. And uh, we raised about seven million bucks and started a company that competed with Elance. If you know who Elance is, the, the bottom line was we were way too early. Everybody who was doing this, this, uh, this, I'll talk about it a little bit later. We were way too early. We ended up burning through that cash and we couldn't do another raise in 2000. So that internet blew up just like the internet was blowing up. Uh, so I left the Valley, moved back to San Diego where I did my undergrad at UCSD you know, I did the whole growing up thing. I got married, bought a house and played house for a while until money started to run out. And I started looking for my next thing. And I went from high tech to low tech. I started an erosion control company. And if you don't know what that is, it's part land management and part construction. And I grew that for me and my garage to 58 people doing on average about $4 million in annual revenue. That business made me my first few million dollars. Problem was in, in 2007, the housing crisis was just starting. And by the beginning of 08, that business, b and Erosion Control, evaporated because large home builders started shedding land. They started getting rid of it. They didn't, they didn't want to own it. And in September of 08, a historic event happened. 
Lehman Brothers failed and kicked off the the global financial crisis that in 2013 we're just getting over. And when Lehman failed, that started a domino effect. Banks across nations started failing. They started just tipping over. And I noticed an opportunity there. There was lots of growing businesses that couldn't access capital. So me and my friend went out and raised $12 million and we started doing bridge loans. And that went great. Our first year, we did $72 million in transactions and uh, we kind of charged outrageous rates, but it didn't matter. We were the only game in town. Uh, almost all of our deals were secured by real estate. And so for me, while looking at these companies' financials, I got a very deep education in real estate values and how deals, big deals, were structured. And late 2009, we had the opportunity to purchase our portfolio of land. And this is what this deal looked like. And this is how I got firmly into real estate. A builder outside of Sacramento, California, defaulted on a $73 million portfolio. The FDIC got it and auctioned it off. It had 66 houses, 525 fully developed lots and another 423 paper lots. Those are entitled lots. We ended up buying that portfolio for $3.2 million. Now, again, we were firmly, deeply in the real estate business. We started selling off that portfolio little by little. But again, this is 2010 and and the market for real estate was still really, really tough. While we were doing that, I realized I had the idea. I'm like, hey, maybe I should go start buying onesie twosies here in San Diego. So I took a million dollars of my personal money and started making offers. I was buying foreclosures for the assessed land value and I essentially got the structures for free. Banks wanted to get rid of, get the stuff off their books. They kind of didn't care. They just wanted cash. And I was all cash closing 10 days, no inspections. Buying was good. In about five months, I had about 15 houses and I had to try to figure out how to renovate, rehab and resell. Over the next few years, I dealt with literally hundreds of agents and realized one glaring thing. Most of them were terrible, terrible at negotiating, terrible at following up, terrible at open houses, terrible about executing paperwork. Some had DocuSign. Others didn't know how to work it. Anyhow, by the end of 2011, I had dumped most of my properties and I kept only the ones that I got super cheap and were returning really good rental rates. And I began looking for my next thing. I had had enough of low tech and wanted to get back into technology. So I started a company called Task Hero. And oddly enough, it was very similar to the company I started in 1999. And it's, it's kind of an eBay for odd jobs. By the, by the way, if, if you don't remember at that time, this is 2010, 2011, uh, unemployment was high. Employment market was really, really terrible. So I created a site where uh, you could, uh, here's an example, you have a large mirror, you need it hung. Um, and you didn't know how to do it, and your wife wanted it done, where, or single mom wanted it done, whatever. She posts that job on Task Hero, and people see that job just like eBay, and they bid on that job. Hey, I see you have a mirror to, that you need hung up. I'll do it for 50 bucks. So we make a connection, and uh, the model was that we took 12% of the uh, the t- transaction. The bottom line was that for me, I, I built it for all the wrong reasons. Um, I built it to flip it and, and my heart just wasn't in it. And uh, I, I abandoned it. Uh, it's still up as of December 2013, the site's still up, but I, I don't allow anyone to register anymore. I just, I just lost interest. And as I said at the beginning on this, I was interviewed on The Eventual Millionaire and the concept for Super Agents Live was born. So far, this has been a really fun ride for me. I've, I've learned a lot, and I, it's really exciting talking to these super successful people. And for you, I really hope that this content will be helpful. And I'm grateful that you found us and that you took the time to listen to me rant about myself if you've made it this far. So I'm excited to go on this journey with you, and I look forward to speaking with you personally. I hope that I'm able to make a difference in your business and your life. Thanks so much for being here, and hop on to episode two.